August 31 is Independence Day in Trinidad and Tobago. A farmers collective is having a back to the land food independence fundraiser three days before on August 28th. Here to tell us more is a representative of the collective, Alpha Senon. So we say good evening, Alpha. Thank you for joining us. But I want you to start off by saying who comprises the collective and what do you do? Because I'm sure there's more than one farmers collective that we'd have in Trinidad and Tobago. All right, great. Thanks for having me. Um, again, good evening, Trinidad and Tobago, all the listeners and viewers across the world as well. Um, so I'm Alpha Senon, the founder of Y Farm. Right, and we came up with the idea of bringing farmers together to help the different needs that farmers may have, especially a young farmer at this initial startup. So we have farmers from across the country that comes together to exchange labor, to exchange motivation. Motivation is very important to exchange um, knowledge and to exchange produce as well. Right, so we have farmers in Sandy Grandy, farmers in Diego Martin, farmers in Moruga, farmers in Separia, in Oropooch, in Sobo Village, in Point Fortin, farmers in um, in Bish, and many different parts of the country that really comprise this farmers collective. And it's it's it's, it's predominantly young Trinbegonians who farm who we are going on, and we are really assisting and collectively supporting them um, throughout, their, throughout their journey. Now, I saw some of the videos that would have been posted. What are some of the recent activities? I know Corpus Christi just passed, and that is a big day on the farming calendar. What was that like for you? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was cool. Um, this year, we, we, we actually had, like, a, um, we actually had, a, on, on Corpus Christi, we planted some dashin. And we planted some sorrel as well too, but you know we really allowed for a volunteer pool of people to really come out and and not just not just plant first, but learn to plant and understand you know the whole process behind that food that you eventually eat. You know where it begins and putting it into the soil and covering it and then watering it. So people are really 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 excited about such things. You know those who may not have the opportunity to do it before, or at least they think they didn't have the opportunity to do it before because you know agriculture is now becoming more and more popular you know, on, on, the, on the ground level, which is very, very important. So, um, you know, some of our most recent activities as well would have been sorrel planting. You know, we, we, we put on a lot of sorrel recently to be able to develop a product with sorrel as well, eventually. And, um, and again, as I said, we have many different farms where we'll plant sorrel. So with my little bit of 10 acres, and uh, you know, farmer brown ten acres. We comprise that, and we plant more sorrel there, sorrel here. We're able to actually now get enough produce to compete on the market, and not just you know, if you're trying to supply a supermarket, for example, you know, with, with the five acres of sorrel, you can't do much with that. So hence the reason we want to bring together two thousand acres of land to be able to really raise the bar where agriculture is concerned, and, and a collective unity level to bring people together and bring communities together as well. Now you're speaking to me and you have been jumping ahead in terms of my list of questions. How important Sorry. to you, because you just spoke about not just being able to plant the sorrel, but being able to make products with it. How important yes. is that agro-processing component to agriculture as you see it? Yeah, that very, very, very um, vital. Very, very important. You see, because for many and many years, and you'll always hear people say this, that the person who benefits in the agricultural sector is the middleman. Who is the middleman? The man who comes on the farm. And I just given us an example. He buys it for a dollar and he goes in the market and sells it for $10, right? Um, you know, don't quote my figures, but it's an, it's an example, right? So the middleman really benefits, right? Um, somewhat. The agro-processor benefits as well. Too, the agro-processor comes and buy that orange um, for, for 10 cents and goes and make orange juice and sells that orange, you know, that, I mean, that orange juice product for XYZ amount of money. Now, I, we at wife and we are rebranding the culture of agriculture. And we really want to say that, hey, why can't a farmer agri-process? Why can't a farmer develop his own product, his own branding, his own marketing and get it on the shelf? Right? I don't, I, you, might, you might tell me 10 reasons why not, but I could tell you 10 reasons, 100 reasons why he should or why she should. So it's about adding value along the value chain. It's about being able to just 
you know, to, to, to innovate along that chain and take that okro, take that baji, take that baigan and do something different with it. It requires investment, yes, but I think collectively is where we could now put up funds and be able to buy our dehydrator, buy, buy a food processor, buy a, a, a chiller, you know, and so many other things that we can now buy collectively, whereas for one person, it's difficult to do it. So definitely adding value along that chain and, um, you know, being able to really reap re the true rewards of getting it from the seed to the snack and the plant to the pot and the crop to the shop. You know, so that's the whole idea of the agri-processing there. And then listening to you now, it makes me wonder how the importance of actually having these buzzwords that people can galvanize behind. But we'll speak about that in a little bit. Uh, but the, the point, this point in the conversation actually reminds me of a recently held one with the communications manager of the Cocoa Development Company of Trinidad and Tobago and efforts made to not necessarily eliminate that middle person, but build capacity from the farmers who are the primary producers. But with that in mind, and you also spoke about funds, what are some of the gaps that exist and what are some of the things that you're trying to work towards with this fundraiser? Right, so definitely with our fundraiser, um, I mean, besides being able to get more machinery in terms of waka and saw, and of course, eventually do a bigger fundraiser where we can buy like a farmer for our collecting, and we could say Monday to Tuesday, the farmer is in the east, and then Wednesday to Thursday, the farmer is in southwest, and then, you know, weekend, the farmer is in southeast, you know? And besides that, we want to be able to, to get machinery to really outfit our agripreneur incubator design lab. What is that? That is a space where young people could come and get not just get access to our empty building, but get access to machinery, to equipment, and training, and motivation. Don't forget that part, to be able to help develop their product. So with funds from our, from our back, to, back to the land fundraiser, um, we want to be able to purchase equipment to agro-process. We want to be able to purchase packaging equipment as well. So one of our ideas that we are talking with right now is developing a color loop pack, but with a difference as well. And I wouldn't let out the secret just yet. Um, that, you know, Farmer Brown could be growing the dashing bush in Grandy, Farmer John growing the okra in Moruga, Farmer Tom growing the pumpkin in, in Sobo. And then, of course, we bring all these things together to develop our color loop pack. But that's an easier product to start with, yes, but we want to be able to then get a really nice package that could tell a story on the shelf and people could be like, hey, that is what I want, you know? And, and that has a story behind, and those are young farmers across the country who's doing something different. So instead of just talking about it, you know, they get people to support it. So we want to be able to get raise these funds to be able to purchase such things. Um, and also seeds and seedling and planting stock and cheap you know, to, to outfit a 10 acres of land with sorrel. That's a, that comes at a high cost, right? And many of these farmers who are coming on board, they may have a piece of land from granny or auntie that given them permission to use it. But guess what? They don't have anything else. So we had to get planting material for them. You know, we were lucky to get support from like CARDI, the Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, um, during the, the quarantine here in Trinidad to support um, farmers with a thousand seedlings in, of sweet potato. So we now have sweet potato on the ground that, you know, within about about two months' time, you should be able to have a sweet potato. And that right? makes so, me wonder, what are so, some so, of the other things that will be going into the, into the ground and also into the boxes that you plan to deal with? But we speak about that when we return from this break. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are speaking with Alpha Senon, founder of Y Farm and representative of the Farmers Collective, speaking about a back to the land food independence fundraiser. It's on the 28th of August. Now, Alpha, what was the menu? Talk to me about that, please. <laughs> you sure you want to talk about menu right now? I don't want you to get there hungry, you know. But, well, <laughs> but um, you know, we're talking about food from the land. We're talking about food that our forefathers used to consume a long time, and you know. Sometimes these days is like a, those are meals that we, we get, you know, once for the year in Easter time and whatnot. And so we want to be able to have provision of all sorts. 
you want to be able to have Moruga Hill Rice, right? We should be partnering up with the Moruga Hill Rice. They have already agreed to donate to us um, several pounds of rice. You know, we're talking about peas, you know, that, 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 um, that nice Tobago peas that we love to consume, right? Um, of course, you know, the fresh green salad. You know, I don't know if you all remember Cuckoo. Huh? I know some people must be and have that in a while. And of course, Kalaloo. You know, that, that Kalaloo with that bhaji and that dashing bush mix. Yeah. I know, of course, we'll have some things like some different nice juice, um, different assortments of juice that folks would order, the, the passion fruit, um, you know, Portugal, and, 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 and this. even sorrel, you know, might should be harvested by that time. And of course, we want to have like some um, fish. We'll have fish. We'll also have chicken and salt fish as well, too. And, um, and of course, some African snacks, things like chili BB, right? Um, to the side of that right there. So that's a, that's a, a quick blurb into the menu. Yeah, I know it would have been a piece of wickedness, but I had to do it. That's one of the um, that's one of the tricks or one of the pressures of the, of the job. But now I hear you talking about peas from Tobago. I hear you talking about Maruga Hill rice. Now I won't pressure you on the salt fish, but it seems as though almost everything being sourced locally. Of course, of course, as as as, as local as you could get. You know what I mean? So um, so definitely we're trying to go that as local as you could get. And as we've been saying, plant your plate. And this is farmers who have been now donating food towards the sale from the farmers collective and other farmers who we work with, right? That they, they would now be able to provide us with the dashing and the, the sweet potato and the cassava and the yam and the edos as well too. So folks will be able to choose like their sites. Now, there are people who've been advocating for eating what you grow, growing what you eat for a while. It has been, but it's gotten a lot more traction during the COVID-19 pandemic where people literally seeing, okay, well, it's harder to get this because mm -hmm. supply chains have broken down. Um, yeah. What do you think that this kind of work where people are saying, okay, well, I can source these ingredients, they're here locally, what does that do for the conversation, Alpha? Yeah, well, I mean, you see, people had to be able to, to realize, eh? you had to start with a plate in mind. And... We have a lot of re-engineering of the brain to be done where food and nutrition is concerned, right? From the perspective of consumption. Because that is where it begins, you know, it begins with, when I say begin, meaning in terms of prepping your meal is like prepping your farm, right? Pre prepping your backyard garden. So when folks start to realize what wait, and, and we saw this a lot during the, the, the quarantine period in, in Trinidad here, that a lot of people went back to the long time days where who know who started to make this and who was doing that and you're seeing all these lovely things over instagram and facebook and people could now realize but wait instead of the quote-unquote fancy things that i have to consume you know that comes in from abroad let's go back to the land let's go back to local and those foods those cuisine could be as great and even better and we will not talk about healthier right because we are in a land where the things in this land is what it was what was put here for our health. Nothing wrong with the foreign things. I mean, it's wrong sometimes when it comes in here and it's maybe not that healthy anymore because of the preservatives and the additives that is in it. But you must be able to understand that the land that you are born in, where you are growing, that is the food that you should be consuming there that is growing there. So I think with that conversation, starting with the plate in mind and then with, with then, then walking backwards then to planting. And as I always say, the first four letters in planting is P-L-A-N. Have a plan when planting. And that is what our Farmers Collective is promoting. So you're talking about have a plan, but please give me an idea of where we can collect. Because I see Sobo Village, Grandi, Dago, Beach, all over the place you have people from in the collective. But where yeah. will the food be available? All right, great. So we, so we plan to have four pickup points, right? Um, north, South, East. Well, north, south, central, um, and far and far east, right? So we are still confirming the pickup point in Port of Spain, but we're looking to have central Port of Spain. Um, the pickup point in the east would be in Sandy Grandi at the hilltop of Steel Pan Academy Panyard, right? And the pickup in South Trinidad would be at the Delton Spaniard Railway Road Superior. Now, we might have us another pickup point in south as well, more central south, in terms of like within the San Fernando area, but we'll definitely confirm. So all of you who's listening, you know, stay tuned to our page and we'll be doing updates, you know, on a, a real marketing campaign between now and then because we want to sell 2,000 box, boxes of food. 
And I think, you know, 1.3 million people in Trinidad and Tobago, I'm sure there's 2,000 people out there who will support this initiative and say, these young men, they are getting their hands muddy and not bloody, and they are doing something different with their lives, and they are not, not just for themselves and their family, but for their community and their country. But it's all about food and nutrition security, reducing that import bill, getting that young person to be able to get into the soil. You know, there's so much tremendous benefits with seeing that growth of that plant, and it changes your life forever. And that brings me to the point of we are in the silly season right now. Many things are politically geared to one side or the other or independence, what have, what have you. But what is the importance of something that is coming from the ground up as opposed to saying, okay, well, a party or administration is doing this so people know exactly what it is they want and working towards that as opposed mm -hmm. to necessarily looking for a grant or a handout, which is good because it helps the cause. But yes, they're saying yes. there's already that initial thrust or impetus coming from the people who know what they want and they're working towards it. Yeah, I mean, people, people must be able to understand that, you know, projects like these coming out of the community, we're not doing this for no fame or for no, or for no favor or, you know, because we want somebody to be on our side. No, we are doing this for the future. We are doing this for sustainability. Right, and if you see the passion and the you know the, the vigor in my face right now and the way I speak, you know this ain't no this ain't no trick, right? And I think that you must be able to understand that the work in communities, like the work we do, the work many other NGOs do, definitely need more support in Trinidad and Tobago. You know, sometimes we try to reinvent the wheel too much, right? And I say, don't reinvent the wheel. Let's make it spin. Let's you know it's all about cl collaboration and not competition. And with young black men, especially in afro Trinbegonians in particular, because we can't, we can't deny that there's a stigma attached. You know, we see it every day and people, you know, people are, people are misjudged and whatnot. And you want a land, you want a piece of land on a Sunday where you could be doing so many other things and you farming on top of some hill, you know, putting things in the soil. If, and every Sunday, if that is not passion and purpose, well, then I don't know what is. You know, so I am saying that people must be able to see that and we're not trying to have to, you know, um, to have to be able to give some kind of hand out to you to come and be part of the collective. No. Everyone in the collective is starting from the ground up. Even myself, we're starting from ground zero. All we're bringing towards, the, bringing towards it right now is our passion. And we want to turn that passion via creativity into be able to get some dollars and cents even if they can't donate dollars and cents, then there must be some other, you know, they might have lands on use. They might have, um, you know, some old machinery when it's doing some project before. Donate it to us. It's and not donating would, it to Alpha Senon. It's donating it to the Farmers Collective. And definitely we will many, try to many, touch many, in. We will try to touch base again with the Farmers Collective before the 28th. But just reminding, back to the Land Food Independence Fundraiser. It's on the 28th of August. And that is your opportunity to support our farmers and farm hers working nobly and honestly to support the nation by purchasing land machinery tools equipment seeds and other inputs across trinidad so you don't have an excuse to say it too far an online payment may also soon be an option but that has been alpha senon representing the farmers collective and we want to thank you on behalf of the entire news team for tuning in i'm bk rostar good night <laughs>